So um, as I mentioned earlier today, we're going to discuss um, Series LLC partnerships. So um, first off, just I'll ask, is anyone currently in a Series LLC partnership? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, no, I was just curious because um, by the IRS definition, um, any individual that owns an asset or in an LLC with another individual theoretically is in a partnership. So if you're in a partnership, um, the IRS requires you to file a form 1065, which is a different tax reform. And that 1065 kind of would have its own P&L, its own assets depreciation. Um, pretty much all that is kind of another form. But where there's a caveat to that partnership is if you're married, you and your spouse could file a 1065 partnership if you want to, which in some instances for tax reasons could be beneficial. Or if you're trying to get loans from that LSE that you both are members of, or as a married couple, you are allowed to not file a 1065 and you can just put it on your return as, a, as you normally would. So that was the one <clears throat> big caveat is if you if your partner is your spouse you don't have to do 1065 everyone else has to do 1065 so that's the subject that i'm going to focus on is the 1065 with the partnership that isn't your spouse so last week can Jason i ask kind a of, clarifying question on that Pete? yeah um so would would you be able to do this 1065 even if you and your spouse were married filing jointly Yes, you can still do a 1065 with your spouse through the LLC. So what would happen is your LLC um, would file the 1065 for 1065, and then it would just issue a K-1 to your spouse and a K-1 to yourself. Mm -hmm. And okay. some, some people um, choose to do that because, A, they can kind of – hide the assets off their personal return. So what I mean by hide the assets is, let's say you have three rentals, they'd be on your schedule E normally. And if you go into a bank for a loan, you know, they ask for your tax return, they're gonna see each property listed out. Well, if you have a 1065, you get a K-1, the k one's just gonna give them a number. So at just the base level of your personal return, they're going to see just the K-1 that you and your spouse own a company. More likely than not, they'll probably keep digging and ask for the 1065 partnership return, but theoretically they may not. So some people choose to go that route and file a 1065 with their spouse. Well, Sandy, Freddie lenders will consider more income off, off K-1s than, than off a sole proprietorship in general, I believe. So it may be yes. beneficial to bulk up your, your income by bringing it through the K-1 route. I didn't know that you could do it as a married couple. Yeah, you can file to choose to do that. It's just, again, it'd probably increase your tax fees because there's a separate return that's being filed. But at the end of the day, like you said, if you were new into the venture, and as a sole proprietor, they usually want two years before uh, banks will lend to you. While with the K-1, that way, you might be able to get that window shortened down. So it does. I miss, so that's, that's interesting. So you don't currently do that, Brendan? Or have you, are you still doing it as kind of through your personal return? Um, yeah, I, I report my stuff through... Well, my, my spouse and I, we report through a, a married filing jointly uh, mm -hmm. return. But, you know, I, I know that Fannie Freddie lenders have, um, have, have taken out a, a chunk of the rental income um, that, you know, in, in consideration of, uh, um, you know, for considering the debt to income ratio and such that uh, mm -hmm. they would not if it were on a K-1. Yeah, can I clarify, get, understand that a little more clearly so that the lenders treat K-1 income, give more weight to K-1 income than they do to uh, Schedule E income? 
Is that correct? Because because on the rental income, um, what I've seen from talking to bankers is in their software, when they enter the loans into their system, they'll also input vacancy credits, which will also lower your income. Uh-huh. And then they have, depending on the bank, they may have um, percentages set for repairs, maintenance that might be lower or higher than what you have, which also take away your income and lower that income. Very interesting. Thank you. Because, you know, if you have new houses, um, you're kind of getting dinged that you shouldn't be for, for non-existent expense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what I also like, um, I think Rebecca is asking for the 1065. What's nice about that is if you have attorney fees, uh, professional fees, marketing fees, um, on the 1065 form, you can actually expense that entirely on its own. And then the properties will be on a form 8825 that rolls up to the 1065. So on a partnership, you can just enter the whole cost for the partnership as an expense. Let's say you paid $1,000 for a legal fee. Um, While if it's on your personal return, to expense that to the property, you would have to put it directly to the property. But if it was a conversation for multiple properties for bookkeeping wise, you're going to have to kind of break that out between the properties then. So it's kind of easier in that aspect to do a profit and loss with expenses that aren't directly tied to a specific property. So that, that's one benefit, Rebecca. For my married filing jointly, that, that would kind of be, I think the two biggest issues I'd see because at the end of the day, the K1, is going to roll up on your Schedule E page two and then roll up to your um, 1040, just like the Schedule E as a personal. So again, it's kind of all flows through to your final return on your personal return. Are there any other uh, side benefits like uh, the ability to set aside retirement funds or something, you know, set aside your IRA contributions or stuff like that, 401k? Um, you could run it through the LLC and you could run it through that way. Um, it might, it could be a little more straightforward if you have income with that, um, LLC as a 1065, but at, at, at the end of the day, it's going to be a wash whether it, um, it, it tax wise, it'll be a wash. It's just where do you want to put the expense and the contribution from the employer, the employer side. How about state taxes? Uh, state taxes, again, it'll just roll up to your 1040 as, as it currently is. So you'll still pay its tax on the dollar amount. That's the one thing too with the 1065 partnerships though, is those are due March 15th. So you have to file those or file for an extension. And if you do file for an extension, um, those have to be submitted by... September 15th. So um, usually just a month earlier. And the reason that I have an earlier filing date is, uh, as we kind of mentioned earlier, a partnership will issue a K-1 to each member. And that K-1 is used to prepare the partner's personal return. Um, kind of the majority of people that are in partnerships, not with their spouses or in syndications or in some sort of deal where they receive a K-1, they usually end up filing an extension on their personal return because a lot of times K-1s aren't issued till June or July. So anyone here have horror stories about not getting a K-1 timely (laughs) that they want to share? (laughs) We have several, including one that's still out. Oh, you still have one that's out. (laughs) Yeah, this is my first year that I've ever done an extension, but it wasn't due to the the uh, LLCs I have, but it was due to my investment in uh, energy transfer. And I had, a, I guess there's a new K-1 or something for about uh, foreign taxes or something. So they said it wouldn't be done until later in the summer. And um, Since I got till October, I haven't looked for it yet. Yeah. Yeah, the IRS did uh, for 2021, there was a new addition to the K-1, it was, I think, a K-2 or K-3. They renamed one of the forms, and it's more in-depth on the foreign taxes. And 
a lot of uh, individuals that were receiving K-1s with those um, had to do an extension. Um, one of the questions is if you do a partnership with your spouse, you would still use the entity EIN. Um, you wouldn't use your social security numbers for the partnership. Um, the, the partnership what, that is an LLC and the LLC has its own EIN. So actually, Pete, my question is, if, let's okay. say if you choose not to uh, choose the to elect to use as partnership with your spouse and you're okay. uh, married filing jointly. In that case, are you using SSN to file the return of that or you still file separately for the LLC and then use the income on your personal return? So the LLC would still file its own. Um, if you choose not to do a 1065 partnership, the Schedule C would file a 1040 Schedule C which is um, in essence the same thing as a 1065, but it would be on your personal return as a 1040 Schedule C form, and you'd use the EIN on that form. And then that Schedule C would roll up to your personal return as income or loss, self-employment income or loss. Okay, actually I have one follow-up question on that bit. Actually, I, uh, I asked earlier also, but... Uh, it will be good to get your opinion also. So um, I have a traditional LLC um, uh, to, you know, for the management. And I work with management companies and they ask me to fill a W-9 form. The W-9 mm -hmm. form for line three, it's very clear. Like if you are uh, not uh, multiple people, then you are basically single, uh, single the individual uh, entity. And then it asks you to use your SSN instead of the EIN. Um, I would use the entity EIN because the entity is making the contract with that management company and the EIN is the tax ID to that management company. So what the management company will do is they will write checks to that operating company of yours. And then that operating company of yours will distribute the profits or rents to your holding company where you have the rental properties okay then llc Cause, sorry go ahead because the LLC, that operating company at the end of the day is just kind of a face it has no assets and it usually ends up at pretty much zero or little income per year so that llc will be categorized as a individual or a partnership it's not a partnership though right well, again, it, by the IRS definitions, if there's two people that are members of it, even okay. if they're spouses, it's a partnership, but you okay. just get a waiver as a sole member if you're married. But on those 1099 forms that they request so they can send you a 1099 at your end, I would use the partnership name and EIN. I would not provide my name or Got it. social Thank security you. numbers. Thank you, Pete. Yep. Um, Brandon... From what I've heard under the old way of the IRS, partnerships get audited less than sole proprietors. Now, with the new tax law that was just signed or the Inflation Act, where the IRS will be getting more funding going forward, I do not know if that will still be the case or not. Everything I've read has talked about them focusing more on higher net worth individuals with maybe S-Corps, and people in the kind of Bitcoin currency type trading markets. But again, I don't know the future, but historically, yes, partnerships don't get audited as much. But, at, at, but just to give kind of a context, the last 2020, 21, 19, I think percentage-wise has been the lowest amount of audits. Um, kind of, of all time, so. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, anybody else have questions regarding the 1065, if there's any issues from like a tax standpoint or how they kind of roll up to your personal return? Yeah, hey Pete, um, if I have a spouse on my series, but I'm the primary member manager, does the K-1 go off of like 
both of us split evenly or all to me because I'm the mem- like so the sole manager? So if, if you do the K ones, it, it's it'd be depending. It's dependent on how you contributed capital. So on the K one, it would say you're the managing member and you have to sign the return for the 1065. Well, more likely than not, you're probably in a state where it's 50 50. So at that point, it'd be 50 50 based on that concept. Unless in the LLC formation, it clearly stated you had X amount of ownership and then he had X amount. Cool. Thank you. Yep. I just have a quick question. Uh, yep. When you talk about partnership, you are talking about uh, forming an LLC, but file tax as partnership, right? You're not talking about the entity itself is partnership. The LLC is formed and the LLC then would be filing its paperwork as a partnership. Right, because uh, if you have... An entity that's partnership. Uh, for example, a lot of uh, lawyers they they are partnerships, um, and they're not LLC. So we're not talking about the 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 entity itself uh, legally, right? We're talking about how do you file tax. However, the entity is still uh, an LLC. Is that correct? Yes, it's an LLC entity, and we're just I saying see. LLC as a partnership. We're not talking about um, limited yeah. liability partnerships or limited partnerships. Okay, or general okay. partnerships. Okay, yeah, this perfect. is all, sorry to confuse you. This is all based on LLCs or series LLCs. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, okay. And then can you just um, give me uh, like a list of benefits of uh, filing as partnership instead of uh, disregarded entity or uh, as a S corporation? So um, the nice thing about the LLC as a partnership 1065 is kind of mentioned earlier, um, there's, when you're running your real estate business, there's kind of costs that you incur, maybe travel, training, legal fees, that might not always be directed to one of your properties. So this, uh, on a 1065, it allows you to kind of expense those as a total for the partnership to where you don't have to break them out. And it's just a lot easier from a tracking purpose and an organizational purpose. So that's one benefit. Um, as Brendan mentioned earlier, you know, the banks in his experience, they, if you have a K-1, they're going to recognize all that income. Well, if you have it as a sole proprietor flowing through your Schedule E by rental, they may not recognize all those. Um, so those, those are kind of the bigger benefits. Um, and also kind of can keep, when you do go in for loans, uh, it won't prevent, but it could limit limit the questions banks ask on what your assets are or other types of income where they can see what you're charging. So let's say you owned a business and the property and you rent it from one another. Um, it could provide a little barrier from them really seeing more into that by doing a partnership because they're just seeing that single line item for all your properties. Um, so if you ever get audited on your personal are they also going to audit your partnership uh, tax or a separate issue? They, they wouldn't even audit. That, that would be a, a separate issue if they look at it. Because what you do is you, as, as a tax preparer, I file 1065 with the IRS. It says yeah. 50 grand yeah. and then it issues K-1s. Right. Zero, so so. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering... Uh, when the RS uh, start auditing you personally and mm-hmm. they find things and they will that typically trigger them to go into your uh, partnership tax returns to look at those or they wouldn't go that far? I mean, that's just my question. <laughs> Historically, they would not go that far because they're looking okay. at just your personal return and they see a K-1. Oh, got it. I'm, I'm not saying they won it, but just historically yeah. they have not. And yeah. with the new influx of cash too, I, I don't know the future on that. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that, that's um, true. Thank you. Mm-hmm. But for an S corp, um, that's, you know, its own corporation, even though it's an LLC taxed as a, a corporation, 
Um, those can get audited and they are audited more frequently than a partnership historically. And that is one thing that I've read mentioned that the new IRS agents coming on board will focus on some S corps supposedly at the 400,000 level or above. Um, yes. So if your LLC is a single member, then your option is only 1040 or uh, 1120, right? Or when you say single member, is it just you or is it yes. you and a spouse? Yes. So you can't. Yeah if, it's, yeah. if it's just you, it would be you. It would be his, um it will be so member schedule disregarded or 1120 yep. as, as corporation. Okay. Got Correct. It. Thank you. Unless mm -hmm. you create another entity that's an LLC that it becomes partnership. <laughs> I see. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Julie. We have a question from Devon. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Devon. Um, says, I'm thinking of putting my bank account in a single member LLC. Do you recommend to have myself as the manager of the LLC or just apply myself as the president of the LLC to make it easier to sign the paperwork? So um, typically, you would have a bank account for your LLC and it could be under the same bank you're at and you would be the person in charge of the bank account. Um, was that your question or... No, no. My question, uh, like, you know, I know I have a, a different option. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. No, no. My question is, you know, like, um, that's what I want to do. Open an LLC in my bank account. My, my question is, does it matter if I have myself as the, you know, so the bank, the LLC bank holding LLCs owned by a living trust. So does it matter if I have myself as a manager of the LLC, the the bank holding LLC, or I can um, or I can have my or or I have the choice as the manager, and I have myself as the president of the LLC. Because I was just thinking, make it easier when you sign, you know, the paperwork and everything. Um, you know, and then. Yeah, that's what I was thinking to to make it easier when I sign the paperwork. If anything, paperwork needs to be done. Yeah, and that not aspect. Too. Are you trying to stay anonymous? Because that might be more of a legal question. But I would think you would want to be able to have your name on it to sign any paperwork. So it would be better if I have myself as a manager of the LLC that that owned by a living trust. Uh, do I have to? Well, you'd have a bank account opened up under the living trust, and then you'd be on it. Your name would be on it as someone who has signing privileges. So, so you saying if I if I open an LLC and I have a living trust as the owner and myself as the manager of that LLC, so when I open a bank account, does it gonna be under the LLC name or would it be under the trust name? Um. The LLC is it an operating company or what's the LLC? What are you wanting to open? No, a bank no, no. Just, for? just to mainly holding my bank account. You know yeah, what it's I mean? Be, like, it'll be. It has no real be, estate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'll be under the name of the entity that's opening it. So if it's your LLC, the bank account's going to be under the LLC's name with its EIN, and then you're going to provide your personal name as someone that can sign items out of it so so you saying i don't need to worry about the trust because i'm gonna have the trust as the owner of the llc and myself as the manager so it's easier if any paperwork or anything needs to be done i can sign for it yeah and correct on that that's where i would probably contact the the legal side of the business to determine the best way to approach that just from a bank account standpoint it's you can open it as the trust and the trust would be the name on the bank account. And then your personal name would have signing privileges. So I'm See, not. That's, that's, yeah, that, that's what I tried to get away of. I was like, so I can either go the LLC route for asset protection or I can go the trust route. You know, like, mm -hmm. why do I have to go through an LLC and have the trust, leaving trust on the LLC? 
But then I can't just go to a bank and open an account under. Well, I guess I can under living trust. But then that means when you do the 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 tax at the end of the year, I look up online. It says you know the trust tax rate is a lot higher. So you know, and this is this is a single member LLC. So I try to keep the tax rate the same as for me. Yeah. So certain trusts too. Um, a living a living trust tax wise is just going to flow up to you. Living trust you don't really file a ten forty one or pay taxes off for the most part, unless it's where you're not able to amend it, and then you would have to pay taxes on it if you kept income in that trust's name. While most people which issue a K-1 from the trust, which would zero the income out of the trust, which would make it have no income and therefore no income tax. So do, does that mean I have to do a trust, trust uh, tax return then? Uh, for living trusts, that, living trusts that you can make adjustments to, um, those, to my knowledge and understanding, they flow through to your personal return. They're not like a true trust, trust in the sense of a tax perspective. The key is whether it is a disregarded entity or not. It is so a disregarded the trust is entity. Disregarded. Yeah, yeah, it should just flow to your personal taxes then. Correct. And the only way it becomes not a disregarded is if you make it to where you can make no changes to it. But those aren't the web trusts that we set up at Royal Legal. And uh, Devon. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. I just try to make it easier, you know. If I just go ahead, just forget about, you know, just open an LLC. My main thing is for asset protection. So I would just like, should I just go ahead and open an LLC and not even worry and have my name as the uh, owner on the 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 bank LLC, you know, or, you know, or, or or should I just have well, to well, be trust to be the owner? I just try to make it easier in terms of doing tax and stuff, and make it. My main thing is asset protection. That's it, you know. Correct, and that's what are you using the LLC for? I guess is it an operating company or what? what no, are no, you no. Trying? It's just that you know, you know how you have. Uh, I have uh, some um, uh, CD, you know. Okay. So that's that's my emergency fund CD. You know, I have some gotcha. CD at the bank emergency. So for asset protection, I just want to go the extra step, you know, open an LLC so they can't trace me down. Basically, you know how the lawyer can look up your name and they know, oh, they mm -hmm. can find you wherever your stuff is. So if I keep it under an LLC and I, I, I don't show the public, I own it, then they, they can't find me, basically. That is mainly for asset protection. Then I don't you know, would... I'm being too annoying. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> then that instance, far. I would open it under a the LLC in that point because the LLC bank account is going to be the name of your LLC and the EIN is what you would provide the bank which is in the LLC documentation you should get a right. number there so um, I, I would say if you are talking about uh, your bank account, CDs um, stock brokerage, keep it in your personal name Really? Why? But then, you know, the, if, if you go and got into, a, I, because I own a real estate on the side, so I'm just away, you know, afraid that, okay, if someone sue me from the real estate, and, and yeah, real estate, even though my, keep, real estate they keeping can your name or, down. or land trust, um, bank account, those kind of things, keeping your personal name. It, well, this is not a legal advice, but keep it under your personal uh, name. If any lawsuit, um, personal has exemption. LLC does not have exemption. So especially in certain states, the exemption could be quite high. They, they couldn't touch it. Oh, I thought yeah, the exemption is the house, not the bank account, but I could be wrong. <laughs> well, usually it's like retirement accounts, uh, high level usually. Every state's different. Right. Those are usually protected. Um, Certain house we're talking about Texas now. Yeah, I'm in Texas, yeah. so we just talk about Texas. Yeah, only retirement account in your house, that's it, and your car and your whatever, some item. But I, I, as far mm -hmm. as a bank account, I don't think it's under a SEM for, for, you know, a judgment call uh, from the church, you know? So that's, that's the, I was just thinking of that part. Mm -hmm. um, so you think I to make it easier, just open an LLC and, and, and have myself as the owner of the LLC, single member LLC, and then uh, I don't need to even consider put it 
the living trust as the owner of the LLC? Yeah, um, let me. You need to uh, ask that, me. That's, more of, a, that's more of a legal right? question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Div oh, Devon. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yes, Devon, uh, we are dropping some links there. It's a free consultation from our legal side. So uh, Liz is dropping the links. Offer to be able to do that. Just click on the link and then, um, you know, answer the questions. And then um, someone from our team will contact you regarding those questions. For All right. Long. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Let me, I'm sorry, I'm just looking through. Uh, Brandon, you're talking about the California franchise tax? Oh, I, yeah. I didn't ask about the somebody else. Yeah, no, I said, Brandon, you did. Um, the minimum $800 fee, and then it's based on revenue. If revenue is X amount, then you have to pay more than the $800. Is that what you're asking? Or Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's there's an $800 tax, and then uh, for revenue over 250 k uh, gross revenue, there's an additional um, there's an additional fee, but that isn't charged to um, to a single member LLC. Um, what I'm asking, and you probably either know this or not because it might be too in the weeds to to figure out on the call here but you know does it end up being a wash um you know with that additional fee that gets paid if you go the uh the partnership route um or not you know i i think it probably requires figuring it out both ways to see if uh, if it ends up being tax neutral or if the fee is in addition. Yeah, that would definitely require an analysis because off the top of my head, I, I yeah, the only right. answer I could say is it depends, <laughs> and it would depend on dollars. So, all right, yeah. good answer. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Um, so I just want to do a time check. We got about eight minutes left. Is there any other questions that you guys have or haven't addressed yet? Looking through the. Yeah. The so what about, what about if you have a person, let's say you have the series LLC and it's your spouse or whatever, whoever's on like the parent series LLC, but then you have, can you, and how do does it function to have someone else on one of the child series entities and do a partnership with like a, a second person or a third person. So from a, a tax standpoint, it, that partnership on it, what would happen is let's say house one, you were a partner with your sister. Um, what would happen is that would your percentage of that partnership would flow up through your final return. So if you owned half that house in house A, um, all the expense, all their revenue, about half of that would roll up through your um, series LLC. And that, and and that child is not filing a 1065 on its own because it's now a two LLC partnership? Um. You, you could recognize it that way where that child itself could have to file a 1065 and then the K-1 would go to the parent series LLC. You could do it that way as well. Okay. And then what you were saying is you could, you would con you could also consider it as you're just half, half investment in that your particular LLC. Correct. Uh, and you just take half of everything. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, at what point would you say uh, we do that? We have to do it 1065 when there's three or four or more partners so a 1065 is required if there's just one other partner that isn't your spouse is how I would conservatively tell you to do your returns. Okay. So then I would think that if, if two different LLC entities owned by different persons, they would have to file a, a 1065, even if it was one of your child, right? Correct. If you're the wanting to do it the most, um, by the book way, you, that's how I'd recommend and that's how I would do it. Other 
people would just keep it in the series and then just issue a 1099 or just issue half the profit or half the income. But in this example, I was just trying to say half of it will end up in your parent LLC. But yes, um, from a tax standpoint and a, just a, even asset protection standpoint, having a separate LLC with someone that's not your spouse is probably the safest way to go, in my opinion. Can I uh, uh, share a little bit about uh, what I went through? And uh, since I have a, uh, both the series and uh, traditional uh, in, under the real legal system, and we're five owners on each one. And so for opening a bank account, you know, I went to the bank to open it up under the seri- one bank account for the series LLC and another bank account for the traditional LLC, which is the operating company. And the bank, um, there's five of us. Uh, and so the bank asked, well, you, we'll just need your operating agreement. I gave them the operating agreement for both entities, two separate bank accounts, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, basically, we I didn't give them the whole operating agreement, just the first page and the signature pages. And then they said, okay, it looks like the trust owns it. Can we have the trust? And, I, and so I did the same thing with the trust. I just gave them the first page and the signature page, and, and they accepted that. And uh, and so they uh, basically the, the, the name of the bank account is in the LLCs, not in the trust. And um, the bank also had all five of us sign. Uh, although I pointed out to them, well, your your documents say 25 percent owners and we're only 20 percent owners. Right. Because there's five of us, mm-hmm. uh, yep. but they still wanted all of us to sign. Yeah, because I'm just curious, did they have any in their stipulation with the bank account or in the partnership agreement was it like a simple majority of over 50 percent so you would need three out of the five people or mm, i don't remember the the operating agreement saying that i know it just says okay. that we're all equal owners 20 percent, you know gotcha uh, but i mean it's it's 100 percent owned by the trust but we're all 20 percent uh members of the trust and um, mm-hmm. Yeah, something like that. And, and even when we bought the prop, we bought a property. We bought it under the name of the operating company, and uh, the uh, the closing company and the lawyer that we hired, you know, um, uh, had us uh, sign as uh, all the trustees signed that I could sign and buy the property on for the for the uh, for the for the uh, LLC. And it was just a simple document they drew up. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're kind of the managing member and have agent authority. So interesting. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. 